Hey friends, welcome to our midweek moment. Uh, Pastor Nicole here. This week we started a brand new sermon series called Ghost Stories, where we're talking about the Holy Ghost. So we've been taking a look at the Holy Spirit and where we encounter the Holy Spirit in scripture. And while most of us probably think of those New Testament stories, uh, the stories in Acts and where Paul writes about the Holy Spirit in his letters, we decided to focus this week on the origin story of the Holy Spirit. So we talked about where does the Holy Spirit come from and, and where do we find the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament? And once you kind of get digging, the Holy Spirit is all over the Old Testament. <laughs> so we, we talked about how the Holy Spirit was present at creation and that the Spirit hovered over the waters of the dark deep. We talked about how the Holy Spirit spoke through several prophets throughout the Old Testament. And um, this weekend, we're going to talk about one prophet in particular that the Holy Spirit spoke to. So tune in for that. That'll be fun. Um, and we just talked about how the Holy Spirit is seen as coming on people all throughout the Old Testament. So uh, we kind of got the origin story of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that um, I think is so challenging about the Holy Spirit is it's just a really different concept for us to grasp from God the Father and God the Son. For whatever reason, it's just a little kind of nebulous. And I think the reason why that is, is because, you know, when we think of God the Father, we sometimes we think of like the old man sitting on a cloud, great beard, very deep voice, right? Which isn't an accurate picture of God. <laughs> but, you know, we kind of have that picture in our mind. And then when we think of Jesus, we think of the man who walked here on earth, you know, Long hair, white long robe, blue sash. <laughs> so we have these like ideas in our head of what God is like and what this the son, Jesus, is like. But then when we think about the spirit, it's not really, we can't really personify the spirit because the spirit is like not really personifiable, right? So we have these two pieces of the Trinity, God the Father and God the Son, who tell us who they are through their name and, and tell us about the relationship that they have. So God is the father of someone, right? Jesus. And, and Jesus is the son of someone, God. And so there's that natural connection between the two. And, and we see that relationship and we know that God is relationship. And so that sort of makes sense to us. But then we get this third wheel of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times that's how we treat the Holy Spirit, like a third wheel, and so we talked this weekend a little bit about how, you know, this Holy Spirit gets the bum rap. And that's really unfortunate because the Spirit is, is God. The Spirit is God. It is co-equal to the Father, co-equal to the Son. And sometimes our understanding, we just can't maybe grasp it because it's a little bit more disembodied than the idea of the Father and the Son. So I think sometimes we just struggle with the Holy Spirit, and I think it's okay. It's okay to struggle, but that struggle should lead us to want to learn more and to experience the Holy Spirit more so that we get a better grasp of who the Holy Spirit is and how the Holy Spirit works in our life. Now, over the next two weeks, we're going to continue to talk about um, how the Holy Spirit works in our lives and um, how we see that kind of play out in scripture. So I hope you'll stick around for those two weeks. Um, I think it'll be good for us to kind of dig in a little bit more. One of the things that helps me experience the Holy Spirit um, and to be kind of aware of the Holy Spirit is to think about, so this weekend we talked about how in Hebrew and in Greek, pneuma in Greek, ruach in Hebrew, can mean spirit, it can mean wind, it can mean breath. And so I like to really focus on breath and wind to feel and experience the Holy Spirit. One of the things on a windy day, I like to just take a minute and experience that wind whipping around me and to envision that the Holy Spirit is around me. Because the Holy Spirit is always there, right? But the wind helps me to be conscious of the Holy Spirit's presence. Another thing I think we can do is be conscious of our breath and to really think about when we're breathing in and breathing out, 
that we are experiencing the Holy Spirit, that the breath of God, the breath of the Holy Spirit is in us. Every time we breathe, we're breathing in and out the power of life that the Holy Spirit gives to us. And so sometimes some guided meditation, some breath prayer is a really wonderful way for us to experience the presence of God, to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about these before, but one of the easiest ways to do that is to just pick a phrase and you breathe in and pray half of the phrase and you breathe out and pray the other half. So we might say, Holy Spirit, be with me. Holy Spirit, be with me. And we just kind of breathe that prayer in and out and that can help us to experience the Holy Spirit in a fresh way. I came across a reading um, from one of my favorite books that we talk about a lot here, Anchors for the Soul. If you don't have this, really just pick it up because it's so good. Almost every day I'm left thinking, oh, I just really love that reading today. So there's one in here that I want to share with you. It's called Breath of Life. This is by Joyce Rupp if you're looking for the book. Breath of Life. God is as near to us as every breath we take. Our breath constantly provides a reminder of our communion with God. The pattern of our breathing presents an attentive focus in prayer, keeping us mindful of the one who dwells with us. Breath of life. You ride the waves of life with me in the rhythms of my communion with you. You enter the comings and goings of each day and in every prayer I breathe. Whether I am in the stillness of quiet prayer or in the fullness of a day's activity, may your presence flow through my being. I saw that was perfect today as we're talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit being breath and that as we breathe, we can experience the Holy Spirit with every breath that we take. So today is a little bit of a blustery day uh, as I'm filming. Uh, next time you're outside and feel the wind, take a moment and welcome the Holy Spirit into your life and to just experience the Holy Spirit in that moment. Maybe later today, take a couple of minutes to pray a breath prayer and to experience the Holy Spirit in that way. You know, the Holy Spirit is wonderful and I think that kind of the, the nature of it being a little hard for us to understand, the mystery of it, is part of the beauty of the Holy Spirit. That we don't have to fully comprehend how the Spirit works to know that the Spirit is at work within us. So as you continue to contemplate the Holy Spirit and as we talk about it the next couple of weeks, may the Spirit whisper into our ears, come into our bodies as we breathe, and may we experience the Holy Spirit in new and exciting ways. Would you pray with me please? Oh, Holy Spirit, how grateful we are to experience your presence in our lives with every breath that we breathe, with the wind that we feel swirl around us, with the ways that you continue to bring your work to our minds of how we can share your love and grace with others. As we think about the Trinity, the mystery of the Trinity, and how you continue to be a part of God the Father and God the Son, help us open our minds that we might further contemplate this mystery. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, I hope y'all have a great week and hope to see you this weekend. Bye.